My name is Nathan Jepson. I'm a development editor at O'Reilly Media, and uh, I am here with Ben Clemens, author of 21st Century C. Uh, ben, welcome. Hi, good, good to be here. Thank you. Thanks. And I would like to start off with our first question, uh, just uh, really start off the conversation. It's not really a question about uh, 21st Century C and modern C programming. Um, you know, a lot of people, well, can discount C as boring or outdated. With the new C11 standards, there's a lot of new exciting things, changes, and really a lot of new possibilities are opening up for today's programmer. Um, that's what your book focuses on, and I'd like to throw it over to you to start talking about that. Uh, sure. Yeah. Um, uh, hey, you, you know what? Before I start talking about uh, about the book, um, you know, I, I should tell tell readers. Uh, there is a full list of, of what is in the standard, in the, in the C11 standard. They, they can find that online. Uh, the, the, uh, the formal name is the ISO slash IEC 9899 standard. So if, if they, they can look online, they can get a, a draft copy of the 9899 colon 1999 or 9899 colon 2011 standard. And they're, they're actually in some ways pretty readable, and they can get a full list of everything that, that changed over the course of, uh, the, the, you know, one version to the next. But, yeah, that, that's that's only part of the story. And, uh, you know, so some of those changes are pretty pretty evident and pretty small. Uh, you know, the, there are new library features added and so on and so forth. Uh, and so, some of the changes are, are kind of responsive to the changes in the environment that we've seen. And so there's some background to it, and, the, and there's some... Uh, in consideration of, of how we would use these things, uh, I think I think the, the biggest thing that, that's changed since you know since C came out in the 1970s uh, has been that we care a lot more about user interfaces, uh, which which is not so. Yeah, I imagine what, when when KNR was written in the 70s, the term user interface was, was fringe; it, it barely even existed. And now now we really care, right? And so I think of a lot of the additions to the new standard uh, since 1989 as being being user interface improvements. Uh, yeah, so every time we write a new function, every time you have uh, you know something where you're going to tell people who use your library, okay, here's what you do in order to get something done. That, that's user interface, right? So there are a couple of things that we can do. There's uh, Additions like variable length macros and designated initializers and compound literals, which I, I, they kind of sound like jargon here. Uh, I, I abbreviate it out as lindicals. Uh, there are lindicals and you know ways to use those that we can improve our user interface, and that, that's the part that actually really excites me most. That we can uh, actually address how, yeah, the function interface is it's not very exciting. It's not. Um, it's very simple, and you know, to a great extent, it's deliberately simple. And you know, when people say we should trick this up as much as possible, you know, even I think we can kind of put a break on that. But yeah, we have we have new ways to to, to make the interface a little more robust and a little more user friendly uh, than we had in the 70s. Um, what, what, what else changed between uh, C99 and C11? Um, thinking. At, I mean, there are other little grammatical additions that also can kind of give us some, uh, you know, some extra tricks we can do. Uh, one of my favorites is, which is it's almost self-descriptive. There's a thread local keyword, uh, which allows us to uh, take static variables and have a separate static variable for every thread you have in your program. Which again, it, it, this opens up some possibilities, and there's some things that uh, in the 70s. Oh, by the way, I have a visual aid. I have a visual aid for you. Here's here's my bookshelf. Uh, I, I used to be really into this, and you know, I collected basically everything with a blue and white color scheme. Uh, I've got you know two editions of KNRC, and you know the reference manual and the answer book for the second edition of KNRC, and so on. Um, yeah, I was really into this for a while, and uh, you know, I read all of them, and. Um, yeah, I read them all in. Wait, I'm digressing. I'm digressing. I I I, sh I shouldn't do this. Uh, I, I, as an author, I need to be an incredibly organized speaker. But uh, yeah, these guys, 
they barely even thought about threatening. And you know, if, if you read through K and R, there, there's no mention of it. It's not not really a concept. So they say, oh, we can use static key, you know, the static keywords to run functions like this, and you know, do these little tricks. And that was great. And then somewhere, you know, in the late 90s, everyone started talking threading and saying, oh, we can't use C anymore because we can't use these tricks because they don't work for threading. And now we're back. The, the C committee has responded and said, well, you know, yeah, we care about threading, and the language needs to accommodate that, and, and we can. Uh, so I, I only touch on that in the book uh, in terms of the, the thread local keyword. Uh, there are other additions that are not yet supported by compilers, so it's hard for me to talk about them. Now, that's, that's very interesting, because I, I, you know, many programmers coming to the C programming language and, and many other languages, you know, there's so much polyglot development nowadays. And you know, many times a, a programmer is challenged. They're, they're coming from Java, they're coming from C Sharp, and they may be picking up C. It may be a new job, it might be a, a separate project that they're working on. And the difficulty has always been finding the correct way to do things. We can go on to the internet and we can find a quick example of you know, how something could be done. You know, and I think what this book does excellently is it points out the newer standards and the correct way of, of programming um, with the new C11 standards and, and mentioning threading and uh, is, is I think, uh, kind of one of those key core components that have changed. Uh, yeah, I, I, guess it, I, I guess it's kind of a, about me as an author because I picked up C uh, after picking up a lot of scripting languages. Uh, I, I, I do a lot of uh, numeric computing and so you know, I learned MATLAB and Octave and R and you know a couple of other things that uh, you know they're they're more scripting languages than than really uh, heavy duty programming languages. Though many people have written heavy duty programming languages. Uh, and and then at some point R was too slow and I needed to do stuff in C. And so I I slowly picked up the language. And yeah, I, 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 that, that's when I started reading you know Kernighan and Ritchie here and a couple of other things. And by the way, I'm, I'm going to pause and check the, the index and make sure that threading isn't mentioned in there. Uh, I like to fact check. So, uh, no, no, threading is not in the index. So, oh, okay, great. Um, yeah, so that's when I started picking this up. And, you know, so, so a, a lot of people, they learn C, uh, it, you know, actually in a formal, you know, in a formal classroom environment. Sometimes it's their first program, programming language. But yeah, I came at it uh, the way that a, a whole lot of people do in the present day. You know, I, I, I learned scripting before I really learned proper programming. Mm -hmm. And I and then I, I started picking up C and certain things actually kind of riled me and certain things seemed kind of uh, annoying from the textbook. You know, do I really need to worry about, you know, setting up memory so much? Mm -hmm. And so it it just annoyed me and I, I I'm persistent enough and do enough fact checking that I that I wanted to know, okay, no, seriously. Do I really need to use knowledge that much? Do I really need to do it the way they did it in you know in the 70s and 80s? And the more research I did, the more I found out. No, wait. There's a way around this. We can do this. And uh, you know, it, it, every I, I, the reason why I kept picking up C and why I kept you know pursuing it is that I kept having these little epiphanies like, oh no, wait, it's actually easier. And and that that was pretty yeah, it felt good all the way along and. This is kind of a summary of, of my experience as somebody who started writing scripting and is now, I think I'm pretty good with, with the C programming language, and who came, who came at it from that direction. It's very interesting. And I mean, you know, and the book gets into, you know, so many different areas. It, it gets into, you know, building and packaging your project. Um, it gets into debugging. It gets into including libraries. It, it, it really lays down, you know, a nice, a nice enough foundation and then, you know, gets into really how the C11 standard has touched, you know, a little bit of every area um, as, you know, libraries especially being, uh, you know, being a, a key component. Um, and, you know, I, I think that's really what is most interesting about it is, is um, you know, it's a, it's a compact delivery of information and um, it, it does a great job of, of conveying yeah. how the standards have changed Every yeah, every and, step. and you know, a lot, a lot of it is, yeah, and I, you know, I, I mentioned this, you know, I point this out early on that, you know, uh, about a third of the book, it's, it's not, 
it's not directly about the C. It's not about, oh, the C99 standard added this keyword, and now we can do this. And now, you know, if we if we use um, variable length macros with compound literals, we can do it. Um, it. It's about the environment, and it's about using libraries. Because, yeah, it, I, I mean, gesturing back to the, the blue, blue and white stack of books here, these guys didn't have easy, easy access to lots of libraries. You know, there, there are no URLs in Turing and Right. That, because the internet was built on C, so that's what kept comfort. <laughs> um, but yeah, here we are. Now, now we, we have the internet, thanks to these guys, and we have immediate and easy access to lots and lots of existing C code. Mm -hmm. And you know, uh, I, I'm sure you've seen GitHub. GitHub, it, it, it's a miracle to me. There are uh, 150,000 uh, 150, projects that identify as being, uh, being C programs, uh, being in primarily in C. And um, that's a lot of pre existing code. That's a lot of pre existing code. And it's, it's, it's almost folly at this point to begin a project and say, oh, I need to do this in C or in, in any other language. So I'm, I'm going to you know, start writing. Right. Instead, you know, we, we need to search the literature. We need to find, okay, well, what uh, what already exists, and how can I free ride on work that's already been done? Right. And that, that's that's great. Yeah. And and you know, the more lazy we can be, you know, the better off we are. Right. I mean, that this is this is the mantra of the program. Mm -hmm. And um, so I went back to the textbook and. You know, I looked up, okay, so I have a library, what do I do? And they don't really talk about it because I guess most of them don't really. Um... Hi, Nora. Right, housemate just came in. Uh, yeah, they, they don't really talk about um, what to do when you have a library because, you know, in the 90s they were hard to get and it was hard to just say, you know, oh, well, here's a standard XML parser. And so just pull that down and start working with it. Uh, and now, now we, we can do that, and it needs to be a routine. And if you're writing in, in pretty much any language, you need to know how to get packages and how, how to compile them. And you know, th th this has been a big innovation in a lot, of, a lot of scripting languages, that you can't have a scripting language anymore unless it has a package manager built in. Right? Um, you, you know, R has it, Python has it. Uh, you, you know, uh, it, it, JavaScript has, you know, a, a variety of sort of versions of this. And so the question is, how do we do this in C? And uh, I, I talked to a lot of people before writing this book, and a whole lot of them didn't know uh, because it's not in the textbook. This is actually the kind of lore that you learn, you know, on the street, so to speak. You know, that, that you pick up reading lots and lots of stuff online, and you get from the internet and so on. So th that's that's why that's why I put that first, because uh, you know if if you insist on writing just like they did in the 1980s, um, but you use libraries to make it happen, then you're already you know miles ahead of, of, of where you would have been before. Uh, so it's important to me, and you know I, I found that a lot of this just wasn't in the C textbooks before. So that, that's why a big chunk of the book covers this background kind of stuff. Uh, before we get to, let's talk about variable length macros and how we can deal with Unicode in the present day. Yeah, I find that, you know, it, but it, it must be quite a challenge, you know, finding some of the older libraries, you know, versus finding uh, some of the newer that, that really implement and work, you know, better with the newer technologies or, you know, some of the new standards. I mean, obviously some of those, you know, some of the libraries becoming obsolete and, uh, Part of the fun must always be searching around and, and finding, you know, what is going to work best for you. And, and yeah, yeah, and, and you know, I, I mean, I, I can't really, it, the book doesn't really go too much over what happens. Okay, you're at GitHub, you're at SourceForge, you're at Savannah, and okay, now you have a couple thousand or, you know, <laughs> tens of thousands of libraries to choose from. Um, yeah, th th then it's the literature search problem and finding, you know, the, the ones that work. Part of the fun of C is that, yeah, uh, the language, you know, the, the, the standards committee really has made an effort to not deprecate much. And there really are, are libraries from, you know, the 1980s that still compile and run, which, again, I, I, 
I think that's awesome. I think that's amazing. And you know, I, th I think it's great to be using, you know, writing in a language where you can do that. Um, I, yeah, I, and I mentioned in the book that it, you know, comments from people who, you know, uh, didn't have this experience and don't don't yet know how to link to libraries. And, and they say funny things. They say, oh, you know, see, it's almost 40 years old, so you have to write everything from scratch in it. And, and, and I'm like, wait, are you listening to yourself? It's almost 40 years old. We have 40 years worth of work that we can build upon. I mean, uh, apart from Fortran libraries, um, there's, there's almost nothing out there that, that compares. And having dealt with a lot of Fortran libraries, it's all <laughs> um, No offense to Fortran authors of the 1970s. But, um, yeah, it can be hard to read. Yes, I, and I think that, that you know, leads into uh, what hopefully will be your next book with us. Uh, maybe we'll get more into the libraries. We, you know, I think that, I think that these kind of books really um, reintroducing uh, C to a new crop of developers or, you know, refreshing the old crop of developers who need something new. You know, I think it does a superb job, and, and I, you know, uh, it will be exciting to see what your next work is and, and what the future holds after this book, the questions that it opens. Well, one, one thing that might, might come, but most of the work I've been doing lately has been on, on, uh, on numeric and, and, and uh, statistical computing. But um, what, one thing I kind of regret is that the, the, the C11 standard came out less than a year ago. Uh, as we are con conversing right now, mm -hmm. and uh, a lot of it is not yet implemented. So th there are a couple of things like atomic, uh, you know, atomic data types and uh, more of the threading, threading stuff that, yeah, it hasn't it hasn't yet really been seriously implemented uh, in a manner that I was able to seriously test uh, before writing the book. So there, there's a whole a whole lot that that, that I'd like to cover. Uh, that that we're, we're, you know, it's just not there yet. Quite. Part of it is that you know there's sort of a distinction between the compiler and the library, and some of these things require library support. Well, the, a li writing a library is a bigger and more complicated process than writing just the compiler. So uh, the the library support tends to drag a little bit behind the compiler support. So there you have it. And yeah, I mean, I wanted to test out everything on here. Uh, you know, where possible. So uh, there were some things that I was restricted from. Really well, it's it's interesting that that C is you know that C is moving. You know, so many people uh, have you know perhaps found it. You know, they find it to be that old language. You know, but but there are still things even moving now as we speak with the new C11 standards, and and I think that's that's what this book does very well. Um, so, well, Ben, it was it's been uh, very nice talking to you. Um, and um, you know, once again, we, we really look forward to, uh, to to your next book and 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 where this goes from here. Thanks, Nathan. Thank you. Thank you.